there's a lot of different things that are different about using a river uh, like this than it would be if you're out in the backcountry. Um, using a river as a place to travel um, is actually a really cool thing as far as like being able to go down and not leave any trace. Like once the wake from your boat disappears, there's no evidence that you were there any longer. So you can travel all you want up and down this and as long as you're not trashing the place, then it's not changing it any, it's not making it any different for anyone else. Uh, but specifically at this point, we're gonna talk about um, using the restroom out here. And um, for number one, it's still the same thing or to, to urinate. It's still the same thing. Um, you go into the water, the leave no trace guidelines for that in a river corridor, or is that if it's at least 500 CFS, then you can go into the water and allow the urine to wash downstream. Uh, that dilutes it sufficiently. If it's less than 500 CFS, then that's not the case. Uh, at that point, it's actually recommended you get 200 feet away from the water or a good ways away from it, and then spread out uh, on the rocks, not on the plants, and uh, urinate onto like beachy, rocky areas that are uh, away from the water. Um, here we've got much more than 500 CFS. So that is our policy is that we go into the water. Um, so uh, whenever it comes, nature calls and it comes time to defecate and you need to release your feces. I don't know what's the professional way that we, <laughs> yeah, it's time for a bowel movement. Then uh, what we're gonna start doing, um, the, the whole cat hole thing does not apply to a river corridor. And the reason for that is, is we can't get out and, and spread out the areas that we're doing this. Like there's a good chance that if you go and dig a hole up in here, you're gonna dig up somebody's poop. Like people have gone up in here and they've buried it and they've used this campsite quite a bit. So there's a lot of it up in there. Uh, so we're gonna try and keep ourselves from doing that. And the reason that happens is there's not too many places to go. You've got the river and you've got the beaches and the small canyons and those are like, that's a high concentration of use uh, that we're getting. So um, what we're gonna do is start packing it out with us. Um, so whenever you, whenever you have a bowel movement, you're, you're gonna go into one of these. This is a wag bag. Uh, you can bring these on a day trip and you don't have to bring the, uh, the, the poop tubes and the, uh, the pet toilet on those. Uh, so this is something that you can use without that. And then you can just tuck it into a kayak and out of the way and then it can just be thrown away. So the way this works, is it's a double zippered Ziploc bag. Inside there is a black plastic trash bag sort of looking thing. And inside of that, this one I've used as an example a few times for guests out on the river. So it's been, um, yeah, it's full guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> I really got to come up with another example bag. Um, all right, so in here you can see that there's a, uh, a powder and what that does is it immediately, like when you uh, poop into this, it starts to, to break it down. It helps to kill the odor, all that sort of, uh, sort of thing. So um, this you can see opens up pretty wide. Set it on the ground, spread it out, and then you can just squat over top of that and go into the bag. Um, you don't have to have that great of aim. Uh, something that is important that you want to tell your guests about is you don't want to pee into that as well. So if you're going to pee, you should probably uh, try and do that first and then move on to this. And for a lot of people, it's very difficult to, to hold one while you're doing the other. And uh, that's an understandable thing. Uh, the reason for that is um, feces by itself is not toxic. We can just like once we're done with this, if it's just poop in there, we can wrap it up and toss it in a trash can and that's completely okay. Urine by itself is not toxic. That can just go into the water and it can flush downstream. The two combined, however, create sewage, which is a biohazard, at which point that you would technically have to have a biohazard bag and dispose of it in the proper place. So you don't mix the two. And as long as you don't mix the two, then you don't have uh, sewage, which is the biohazard. So. Once you go into this, um, you're gonna grab the edges here, wrap it up tightly, and what you're trying to uh, get everyone to do is make sure that there's not a lot of air trapped in there, um, because if there is, 
then it's difficult, especially if you're using the poop tube, you're not gonna be able to get it in there. That's not very big, that opening at the top. So they've gotta get the air out and they've actually kinda gotta like press and they're gonna feel their own poop. Like it's, it's an interesting experience if no one's ever done it. Like you, you can feel the warmth and part of your soul's in there, it's crazy. So um, depending, like, yeah, if you've had one of those like hot chilly nights or something, then. Um, so once you've got it pressed down in there, Ziploc bag is double zippered. And these are actually a little bit difficult to, to get completely closed, but you wanna make sure that it's completely closed. Uh, that deodorizer, uh, it works better if everything is closed up, but if you've got just a little bit of an opening there, then it starts to stink. So if you just stick it down in a hatch of a kayak or something, once you open that hatch up, you're gonna smell it. Like it's gonna be strong. So if you get it all cinched down and double zipper it all the way across and there's no air getting in and that sort of thing, then it helps to, to fight the odor. Um, so your goal, if you're out on an overnight trip like we are, and what we're gonna be using, and this is the same setup that you'll bring uh, for your guests if you're doing an overnight trip, is uh, this is just a brand of toilet called a pet toilet. Uh, talks some about other, the handout that I'm gonna give you guys, talks some about other options, uh, but this is the one that we're gonna be using. So the way it works, we'll go ahead and set it up. Clips on this side. So I've found with ours, trying to keep this on there doesn't really work out very well. So you can set it to the side and that's actually gonna be a good place where you could put toilet paper, hand sanitizer, that sort of thing. Um, these legs just pop out, you get the tripod thing going. This lifts up. We're gonna have these and everyone should be carrying these on your day trips and overnight trips. Like it's just gonna be a uh, part of your kit uh, from this point on. Um, so inside of it, you have, we can open this up right here. So you've got this big guy. And you can set it up just like this and toilet seat over top, press it down. That's not going anywhere. So you can sit down and do your business there. Um, this is your Ziploc bag. So once you're done with this and you've wrapped it all up and it's down in there tight, then uh, that goes into here. And then these include um, just a little bit of toilet paper and a Moist towelette. Mm -hmm. after. Yeah. Save it for after. <laughs> so you go into here. A... All right. So um, yeah, that's that's, that's basically the setup. Yeah. What's that? So this is a just a different brand and style of one. Oh. Um, so this one's got the bag the built bag into bag it. Yeah. yeah. So so it is a brand. It's just a common name 